Father, thank you. Thank you for the time, uh, the preparation that's gone into um, these thoughts this morning. Um, as we've already prayed, give us listening ears to hear what you're wants, you want to say to us. Um, and please bless the words that, that come out of uh, Will and Jill's mouths as they, as they share um, and, and talk about hospitality. Amen. Amen. I think we might have turned the lectern mic off, uh, Paul. We're, we're battling with the sound system today. Um, this, is, this, this is the fullest we've ever been in the room, um, as well as running the stream. And, uh, uh, and, so, and, and Paul and Andy are doing a fantastic job. Uh, so um, let's give them a clap. We haven't been able to do that for ages. <laughs> And for those on stream, yeah, we know there's been a couple of dropouts. We do know how to fix it. We literally have to reboot the streamer. Um, uh, and and uh, so if it drops out, bear with us. It will come back quite quickly. Um, so we're getting there. Uh, thanks, Ben, for praying. Um, we're going to uh, open up God's Word. And we, we, one of the things we learned uh, during last year um, when we were in our lounge room to camera that sometimes it was best for Jill and I just to riff off each other. Um, and I've been watching Jill uh, wrestle with this uh, topic of hospitality uh, throughout the week. And uh, I know it's dear to her heart and I've seen that churn and I've seen those depths. And, uh, and so it's my greatest, one of the greatest joys of my life is to s step back and watch my wife um, uh, uh, bring forth, bring to bear, bring, bring to birth, if you like, uh, the word of God for the moment. So we're going to talk about hospitality. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one of the things that we've often uh, remarked upon is that um, hospitality uh, is, is one of those words where um, it's, it's, it's sort of, we, we, we grasp it quite quickly. We exercise hospitality when we have people coming over for dinner, for instance. But it's more than just entertaining um, we have that, uh, you know, are we entertaining friends tonight? Um, and uh, it's, not, it's deeper than that. And so we're going to be looking at the depths of that today. And we're doing that by getting into a, a text that Peter wrote in one of his epistles. So the, the, what we're going to talk about first is, is the depths that Peter himself uh, might have brought to his understanding of what hospitality is about. So uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, oh, and thank you for reading that to us and for us today. Um, as I was really sitting in this text, one of the things is I got a little bit nerdy as I was reading from Peter. But the other thing that even before we get into it properly was I was really taken with the time that he writes it from. This, what we've heard read today, he's writing from a place of persecution and like, extreme persecution. He, they're living with uncertainty. They're living with trauma. They are, he is living with his friends and his family dying as part of a normal. And they are under threat all the time because, because they declare and speak the name of Jesus. Apparently, one of the things that the early church was so known for was their hospitality. It actually set them apart because of how they lived, how they loved each other and just allowed that open house and open life. The other part with Peter that has really stood out with me is that it's, he is part of such... This, this passage that we're looking at is part of a bigger story, much bigger story. I think most people, when they think of Peter, it's someone they really identify with. They think of that burly fisherman that's mouthy, put his foot in his mouth, didn't think before he speak, spoke or did anything really, um, got himself into strife over and over again. And yet, he was someone Jesus chose to be close to all the time. So this passage even today that we're looking at is is um, everything Peter is saying has come from that place where he knows the heartbeat of Jesus. He, he's encountered the resurrected Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in him. He's also, he's also had to live alongside the mess of what it's meant to be with the disciples and followers for years. So everything he's saying, he's saying from that place. There's a, there's a real sense that um, 
uh, if you think about how did Jesus, we think of Jesus as being the most hospitable person in the world. Yes. But he didn't have a home. No. And, and he didn't uh, have a table except for, you know, Last Supper and things like that. Um, but we see in, in Peter a, 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 someone who's learnt how to host the presence of Jesus, if you like, that, that, yeah. that, that Jesus lives in him yeah. and, and he knows that, uh, and not just intellect, he knows that viscerally, he knows that in, yeah. his, in his experience. So that's the depth that he's bringing, yes. that, that, that a life that hosts the presence of Jesus. Yes. And as we get into the text, that's going to be, that, that's what we're reflecting on um, and, and that's what the text informs. So can we get into, into verse 7? Sure. Right, let, let, and, and we'll go into it. Um, so in verse 7, the first verse of our reading says this. Uh, Peter is saying, uh, the end of all things is near. Therefore, he says, be alert and of sober mind uh, so that you may pray. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Mm-hmm. What's that got to do with hosting the presence of Jesus and of being hospitable. Um, so, just to be a little nerdy, yeah. in the original Greek, the words alert and of sober mind actually just means clear minded. Keep your head clear. Um, but it's there, there to say, so you can pray. And I think Peter, hey, he learned how to pray by watching Jesus, being with Jesus, and he watching Jesus go away and be alone all the time just so he could do his father's business and only do what he could see the father doing. But also he learnt how to pray because there's one particular night where he could not stay awake and watch and pray. He knows that prayer and that place of being abiding and the presence of God is more important and I find it that even that whole thing of keeping clear mind just so that I can be in the presence of God and hear him and be with him is really key. The, the word sober is interesting it because, is. because it speaks the opposite of sober um, uh, is not drunk <laughs> um, but there is a sense in which when you're, you're not of a sober mind you, you, you're embracing a numbness you're, you're closing yourself off yeah. uh, you're, you're em- embracing distraction Anesthetizing. Um, anesthetizing. And there's a sense in which, in Gethsemane, um, Peter wasn't of sober mind then. He, he, he couldn't face the pain that Jesus was facing and so fell into sleep, if you like, and, he certainly, and wasn't alert and of sober mind. And if we think about that in terms of hospitality, if, that's, if an aspect of hospitality is opening ourselves up to someone, then that, that can't be done in a place of numbness. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it comes out, of, uh, and if it comes out of that place of prayer too, yeah. it, without, no, yeah, when you're numb, I mean, there's a whole other conversation there, but um, that thing of not being able to feel, you can't see properly, that head fog and everything else that can go with that. Yeah. Um, and so there's it, verse eight, um, uh, Peter goes on from talking about being sober-minded to, uh, he says, above all. Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Um, that becomes the, the, the basis. So, so, so unpack that for us. Yeah, again, a little nerdy. So in that original Greek where it's talking about loving deeply, first of all, wherever it talks about love, it is agape love. It is that unconditional love of God that is being talked about there. But this word love deeply has all the meaning and implication of being zealous, of being fervent, of being passionate. And even it means like to be stretched to the point of your full potential. So what Peter is saying that from that place of prayer and in knowing the presence of God, living in the presence of God and hosting Jesus, that we can love deeply. We can't actually do it without him. So only then, after exhorting us to have uh, sober minds that can pray and, and fervent love that can reach out to both to God and to others, does he get to the point where, we, where, the, where our theme of the day is mentioned, where he says, um, offer, he then says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Offer hospitality. So whatever hospitality means, it's not just entertaining 
It's grounded in this sober and alert mind mm. and in this fervent love. Um, you've got a quote here. I was going to. I was going to. I was hoping you're going to sure. read um, from. Sure. You, tell us about it. Yeah. So part of this week, Ben mentioned that um, we've had a WhatsApp thing going back and forth, and it means that we've listened to podcasts and read different stuff as we've really thought about this week. One of the podcasts was by a guy called Eric Jefferson, and he talked about hospitality with these sorts of words. He said, hospitality of the kingdom is where people are welcomed in, where they are treated with dignity and value. A life living in the presence of Jesus is one that shows the welcome of the Father and it's saying, you belong here. You, we want you to be part of our family and I want you to know the love of the Father and I can see you and I can hear and I want to hear your story. There's so much more depth there than just doing life together. No, it's and, not or, about or, that. Or, 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 or having a nice meal. Yes. It, yeah. It's revealing the heart of God. Yes. Um, Peter wraps it up because I want to dig into those depths in just a minute. Um, Peter wraps it up in verse uh, 10, uh, having talked about this sort of hospitality which talks about belonging and talks about um, and knowing the love of the Father. He, he then uh, wraps the, his, the passage up with, each of you should use um, whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. Mm -hmm. So what, what's that final uh, yeah. the depth that he takes us um, to? So whatever gift you have received is literally everything that we have. It's every, all our stuff in our houses, the who we are, the gifts that God has given us. But also, too, it's even being aware of your, your internal stuff that you might think, actually, that's no gift. When it's within the grace of God, there is a gift there, um, which means all of it then is offered. And all of that is, comes into that place of being in the presence of Jesus. And from there, we can extend and open our, our yes. arms up to others. Yes. It reminds me of that. We've had the doll's house here in front of us. And it reminds me of that metaphor that, that uh, is often talked about, of our lives as a, as a house with different rooms. And, we, and, we, and, and when we come to Jesus, and as we live for him, every room, every, every room that we have in our life is a God's gift to us. Our finances, our, our, our family, our, our um, work, whatever aspect of life you can think of. It's an aspect of who we are. And every part of that gift is a gift for us to use for him. And, and that metaphor that's often used is of, of inviting Jesus to come and take up residence in our house, for us to host him. But of course it runs into some of those rooms we'd rather the door stayed shut on. We don't mm -hmm. want him to, to be in that place. We don't, mm -hmm. we, we'd rather numb ourselves out and be anaesthetised to that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so as we've been talking, the... the, the, the the, the one line of bit of wisdom from my wife this week, which I would put on an inspirational poster and sell it if I thought I could make money, <laughs> um, uh, was this. Um, at the heart of hospitality is our hosting of the presence of Jesus. That's at the heart of our hospitality that we offer to others is the hosting of the presence of Jesus. It makes me think of um, in 1 Corinthians 14 when Paul's talking about some of the way in which people do church. Um, he talks about people coming in to the place and going, I don't know why, but wow, the presence of God is among you. And, and having hosted the presence of Jesus is from that place that we can open up our arms in fervent love to those around us as well. So um, as we think about that one line bit of wisdom, at the heart of our hospitality is our hosting of the presence of Jesus. How do we let that impact us? Um, I can actually go back to something that Eric Jefferson said as well, in that the whole thing of creating space to, or hosting to host the presence of Jesus means that hospitality is all the time. In a life where you have hosted the presence of Jesus, it means whoever is in front of you at any given time is 
you're inviting them into that space. Whether we're sitting on a bus, going for a walk, in an office, in a staff room, no matter where we are, what we're doing, you can say, hey, I, wanna, I want you to meet Jesus. Because that comes out of then who we are, not what we're doing. Um, for me personally, um, because I've, and be, many of you have heard so much of my story, but because I've had so much time where I could not function as a person, like I, would, I couldn't do all the stuff. And I like things just so. I used, particularly when I had four small children, we'd have people around, I would want everything just right. But if you can't function, then what's the option? And so it's been a thing over time of realising that's not what it's about. God, you put this person in front of me. This is about them. But also, too, within our pastoral roles, often we're invited into people's house. And usually, and I think we're probably all guilty of this, the first thing people say is, oh, I'm sorry about the mess. Or I'm sorry such and such isn't clean. Or my children are dot, dot, dot. Or, and I'm like, I don't come to see that. I came to see you. But that's what Jesus has done with us. And that, so that's what we do. But that can be anywhere, anytime. So it's so one of those places is Sunday, who we are on a Sunday. And we want to be a hospitable, hospitable church on a Sunday. We express ourselves here. And, and, and that's meant to express who we are over the whole week. And one, it's very easy in church life to turn our Sundays into a frantic trying to clean up the mess, make the place nice for the, for the guests to arrive. Uh, but, there's, there's the, but that's not actually what brings the hospitality. That might bring some efficiency, but it doesn't uh, em- embrace the hosting of the presence of God. Uh, what comes is, is, is to, is to sometimes lay down our franticness and to attend to welcoming Jesus in. It's one of the reasons why um, we're, we're doing our best as we come back from COVID to not just launch back into a whole bunch of rotors, although there are plenty of those, um, uh, but to have a summer of resting in it all. Um, I remember uh, the, the difference is this. Uh, when I was in Bible college, my new bishop uh, ran into me at... <laughs> at, uh, at uh, in, in the college, and uh, being the new bishop and I being his ordinand, he said, oh, I, we better come and have a talk. When, I can, when can I come for dinner? The bishop, when can I come from dinner, right? You need to get that in the... And the picture we had of bishops was of fine, t- fine ch- china and, and, and... And talking very proper. And, and bows and curtsies. <laughs> and, and I went home and I said to Jill, the new bishop's coming for dinner. <laughs> At which point I completely freaked out. <laughs> and that's off- two small kids, and you that's, know. And that's often how we experience church. We go, we need to do church. So we need to do stuff, and we need to be proper, and we need to get it right, and we need to have a perfect live stream, and we need to have everything... And perform perfectly. Perform perfectly, and everything needs to be just so. The reality was, is when that bishop turned up, <laughs> he, he walked in, he hung his coat on the doorknob, He sat down with our children and watched play school while we got dinner ready. He just brought his presence. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, he just brought the presence of God. And that is is where we're trying to drive to. And in addition to that, the other thing that he brought was his vulnerability, his transparency, which when we're talking about hosting the presence of Jesus is actually what we're talking about. It's that being able to say, yeah, Lord, my life is open to you and you alone. But that can mean being vulnerable. You need to be transparent. The other thing that I've reflected on this week was if we're looking at now, when we look at what people need when they come into a space, is they're not looking for nice, big, strong buildings that don't move or even big, strong, confident people they are looking for transparency because that's where they know they are safe. That means us being open, honest, real and vulnerable about who we are with Jesus first so that we can then live a life like that. 
And, and I think that's where we'll, we'll bring it into land mm. because that's where it pokes at us the most. Um, we are called to host God, not merely to entertain him. We are called or to be... each other. Yeah. We are called, and if we do it with God, if we host God, we will host each other. If we merely entertain God and, and anaesthetise him out, that's how we'll treat each other. So the heart of hospitality, which is an opening to one another, begins with our hosting of the Spirit of God in reality and in openness. And I wanted, uh, Jill, if you could end with that prayer from Lectio 365. Can I just say yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, more sure. first? Yep. One of the things I was really aware of coming into this week is that we've just had 15 months of literally being locked down, shut in and sh shut down, in a constant state of uncertainty, literally hiding behind walls and masks and screens, having to be socially distant and unable to meet with people, eat with people or touch people. And yet we're having to talk about hospitality. But it's because it's within that too that it doesn't matter where we are when we say that we are hosting the presence of Jesus first. He invited us to the wedding banquet. But in hosting the presence of Jesus, we're saying, we just want you to meet him. The other thing that stands out a lot with Will and I at the moment, with conversation after conversation after conversation, is people saying, I feel disconnected. I feel disconnected from people, from my family, from church, etc. The only way to get connected is to connect with Jesus first. Because that's where true intimacy and true vulnerability lies. Now I'm also aware that in going forward, especially when we look at St Tim's and the merge and we start looking at S6 and S3 and all the things that could happen, that we could very easily just go into full activity. It can be all about people. But I feel we have an opportunity. We have a moment in time where I feel God is knocking on our door saying, let me in. We've got a chance for a new start and it can be completely grounded focused in him, through him, all about him, so that he is glorified. But that means we have to let him in and open up our lives no matter how they look or what is going on, because we need Jesus. I'm just going to pray and I'm going to use some words from Lexio 365. If you need to, put your hands out, whatever you may f need to do to just change your posture. Because we need Jesus. Father, I thank you that you loved us first, that we cannot love without you. Open the eyes of our heart. Open our ears to hear you. Open our arms to receive you because we want to let you in. Lord, search our hearts with the kindness of your gaze. Father, I want to give you my front door key. My house is your home. I relinquish my schedule to you. My days are in your hands. Help me to welcome interruptions as gifts from you and I surrender my possessions to you, all my stuff. Lord, take my life, take our life, take all that we are, we give it to you. Have your way in us. We're going to continue with a song. It's one that will be familiar to you, but you can stay in that mode of just saying, Lord Jesus, be at home in us. Be at home in me and let him work in you under the gaze of his love.